Washington State area. We're broadcasting on the wonderful community radio station KBCS, as well as SCAN, which is Seattle Community Access Network, the public access TV station here. I'm Amy Goodman. Federal officials have launched an investigation of a radiation leak at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in Pennsylvania Saturday. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission said about 175 workers were sent home when the contamination was detected. Some were exposed to low levels of radiation. Tests showed the contamination was confined to services inside the plant, which is owned by Exelon, the nation's largest generator of nuclear power. In 1979, a partial meltdown occurred in Three Mile Island's Unit 2 reactor. While nuclear power has long been considered environmentally hazardous, many are considering it as an alternative to fossil fuels in the face of climate change. The government's put up $18.5 billion in subsidies to fund a new crop of nuclear power plants. But our next guest argues now that the new atomic plants are prohibitively expensive. The real issue, he says, is what happens to our old nuclear plants, such as Three Mile Island. He says the country's oldest plants, most of which opened in the early 70s and were designed to operate for only 30 to 40 years, should be dead by now. Yet, zombie-like, they march on, thanks to the indulgence of the NRC. Christian Parenti is a journalist and author of three books. He was guest editor of The Nation's special issue on climate change, which just came out. His latest article on The Nation is called Zombie Nuke Plants, joining us from New York. Christian, welcome to Democracy Now! We'll lay out what do you mean, zombie nuke plants, where are they, what's happening to them? Well, they're all over the country. There are 104 reactors in the U.S., and they're, they're all over the country. And they were designed to last for 40 years. And what's happened over the last several years is that they, half of this fleet of atomic reactors have been relicensed for 20 years. There's actually discussion of relicensing some of them for another 20 years. So um, what happens in many cases is that new companies bought them. Frequently, these old plants were uh, unburdened of their debt at the uh, expense of the uh, ratepayers. And now you have companies like Exelon, which gave over $225,000 uh, to Obama and uh, who has contracted regularly with Axelrod, uh, David Axelrod's PR firm. And David Axelrod is sort of the PR genius behind Obama. So they buy these plants, and they're now running them. Uh, for an extra 20 years. And one of the problems is that radiation makes metal brittle. So these plants are in serious disrepair. They were designed to last 40 years. They're now going to be used for 60 years. And on top of that, there's a process called uprating, whereby these operators can apply to increase the rate at which they operate the plant, in some cases up to 120 percent of design capacity. For example, um, Vermont Yankee, uh, outside Brattleboro, Vermont, runs at 120 percent of its design capacity, and it's at the end of its life. And, and uh, so all over the country, there are these problems of leaks, uh, emergencies, and it remains largely under the radar. And many in the environmental movement uh, talk about atomic power in terms of the future and whether or not we should build a new fleet of, of atomic power plants, how we'll fight climate change. And that's really not the issue, because new atomic power plants are extremely expensive. If all goes well, which it never has in the construction of a single plant in the U.S., it would cost about 10 to 12 billion dollars. Uh, generally, they cost more. There's $18.5 billion on the table. The problem is the federal government has guaranteed up to 80 uh, percent, has insured 80 percent of any private loans that would be made to build a new plant. But no one in Wall Street is prepared to invest in these things unless they get 100 percent public insurance. So there's really not much investment there for it. There are these firms uh, that would love to get on the gravy train of building atomic power plants. Whether or not they ever come online is a different question. They would like to continue uh, building these uh, indefinitely. Uh, and so that's the lobby behind pushing for atomic energy. And it also, basically, it functions as a canard to hide the real issue, which is that we continue to burn coal, which is extremely dangerous for the climate, and the real use of atomic power is to run this fleet of, of old plants into the ground. And we have constantly these small um, uh, accidents, uh, such as the leak a few days ago at Three Mile Island. And so 
the issue that I discussed in this article was the atomic, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. The president uh, has the right to nominate commissioners. There are five commissioners who run this, and the Senate, unfortunately, has to approve them. And we know uh, how the Senate uh, it serves to to block, uh, um, you know, to protect entrenched interests. So o Obama took the best commissioner, uh, Jasko, and made him head of, of the commission, which was a good move. He then had two seats open. He appointed one guy who is clearly, according to environmentalists, um, a proponent of the industry, um, and one guy who is um, a safety-conscious um, professor from MIT, and there will be a third seat open. But what has to happen is this, the, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has to be run by safety-conscious people, because we are stuck with at least half of our fleet of atomic power plants are going to be online for the next 20 years. And currently, there's very, very lax safety. There's, uh, the, you know, these companies are again and again found to be in violation of basic safety rules. At Vermont Yankee, for example, Entergy has uh, uh, not hired as many people as it should. It has uh, skipped monitoring radiation. Uh, it has foregone routine maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, similar situations obtain in all of these plants. I wanted to read to you, um, Christian, from The Washington Post yesterday, which says the Obama administration and leading Democrats, in an effort to win greater support for climate change legislation, are eyeing federal tax incentives and loan guarantees to fund a new crop of nuclear power plants across the United States that could eventually help drive down carbon emissions. Your response to that? Uh, I think that this is uh, — they, they think that this is a way of getting um, conservative Democrats on board, uh, because the construction lobby behind th this process of, of building new plants, one or two new plants, what might happen with that $18 billion, they might increase that, that subsidy to $18.5 billion, one or two extremely expensive, probably quite safe, but just incredibly expensive plants will be built. But in the meantime, what's going on while we're just debating this future that may or may not happen is these old plants are getting relicensed and uprated uh, continually, and no one is discussing it. So I think that there's, there hasn't been a proper discussion of atomic power in this country for many years. It's sort of, a, you know, it's associated with the 70s and the old days, but um, these plants are all over the place, and uh, they, they need to be exposed for what they are, which is leaking, rickety old wrecks that are being run at extremely uh, good profit rates by firms like Entergy and Exelon. And, um, you know, it also serves— How serious was the leak at— uh, Christian, how serious was the leak at Three Mile Island? Um, we don't know yet. Uh, they were, you know, the NRC is investigating it. They say it wasn't that serious, that, it, that the radiation didn't escape outside the plant. Um, who knows? There have been leaks of atomic, of, of, uh, of tritium-contaminated water from Indian Point, from Oyster Creek, uh, that at first go unnoticed. So the groundwater around all those plants is contaminated. Their, uh, you know, atomic power plants routinely, as part of their proper operating, release small amounts of radiation. There was a recent study that found that uh, using um, children's teeth, baby teeth, that uh, tracking uh, contamination around nuclear power plants, and they found that cancer rates among children uh, go up around. Uh, they actually, they drop off very precipitously as soon as a plant is decommissioned. So. Um, you know, and the, the, it sounds like this technology works when you hear the fact that there are, you know, 50-something plants being built around the world, that France has 50 percent of its energy from atomic energy. But what the issue is internationally with nuclear power is that it's, it does provide uh, energy security, you know, and, and this logic comes out of the Arab oil embargoes of the early 70s. So Japan, France have these fleets of atomic power plants that no outside power can control. That doesn't mean they're cost-effective. Those plants are heavily subsidized by the state and by the rest of the economy. And it also doesn't mean they're safe. The French system is much safer than ours. They have one design, one company, heavily regulated, yet they, too, have suffered massive contamination um, in, just, in just the last year. Uh, the other thing is that these plants are almost always linked to 
actual weapons programs or the quest for weapons programs. But uh, if you just look at it uh, superficially, it sounds like, well, the rest of the world is doing this. This must make sense. It doesn't make sense economically, and it doesn't make sense uh, climatologically, because what has to happen is a massive revolution in, in energy uh, in the, it, around the world, and the time frame for building a fleet of atomic power plants does not uh, comport with the time frame we face in terms of climate change. We have to make radical cuts immediately, and the best way to do that is energy efficiency and massive investments in wind, solar, and tidal kinetics, and all of that. And the fact of the matter is, right now, wind power is much cheaper than atomic power. Um, so this is just a matter of entrenched interests, uh, you know, d defending themselves.